in Sepel where I am still now. So that's 39 years there doing research on topics that go from small signal stability. We have a software that's been commercialized at an international level and uh, it's called PACDIN and uh, we developed large-scale eigenvalue methods, two of them in association with Professor Freitas. So been worked in controller design related to power systems, power flow controls, facts, HVDC controls, harmonics, model reduction, blackouts and system restoration. And uh, I am a foreign member of the U.S. National Academy of Engineering that was elected in 2015. The same year I was elected to the Brazilian National Academy of Engineering. And I'm very proud of being a member of these academies and will be glad to discuss with you on that later on. How can I move this to the slide 28? So uh, this was a, a two-topic talk, and uh, I'm skipping to the second part, 28, please. Okay. And... Uh, the second part is a product of a PhD thesis uh, developed here in Brasilia uh, under the supervision of Professor Freitas and myself. And the now PhD, the candidate was uh, Sergio Luis Varricchio, who's a colleague in Sepel, so he's been in Sepel for 35 years probably. So he's a very experienced researcher and he chose to finish his PhD, to develop his PhD work at a mature age. So please PhD candidates don't feel <laughs> frightened with the level because this uh, actually reflects the experience of the Sepel team on the topic, Professor Freitas and myself. It, it starts with uh, work we developed long ago with Professor, uh, uh, Dr. L Leonardo Lima, who now works in U.S. under my supervision. We developed first these models, which were later further developed by Sergio Gomez and Sergio Vajico, both of whom were my uh, PhD students. So, We'll be having an introduction, then modeling the electrical RLC network using the descriptor system formulation, and later the Y of S formulation, in which you develop a matrix where the, all the elements are polynomials in S. And then this allows the modeling of distributed parameter transmission lines as we'll see. And then, once you have this matrix, how can you find the poles and zeros and residues and all the rest for this system? Then we had to develop this algorithm, which is a numerical analysis algorithm for both scalar and multivariable transfer functions for infinite systems and then test the performance of these algorithm and the results obtained uh, in building a reduced model. 
So I worked a major part of my life in model analysis applied to power systems and then found the need of developing new methods to deal with the large matrices and uh, finding poles, zeros, sensitivities, mode shapes, participation factors, etc. And uh, if we are using uh, studying the electromechanical transients, we have the same model used in transient stability, conventional transient stability, in which you have the differential equations for the generating plants and associated controllers, HVDC links, etc. But the network is all expressed as algebraic equations, like in short circuit, okay? Analysis. but expanded into real and imaginary axis. Or you can go to subsynchronous resonance. In that case, you must model. You have a higher frequency phenomena to analyze. You, you then represent your network not more like algebraic equations, but as RLC lumped, sometimes cascade pi networks for a line if long. And if you go, you are probably not seeing the bottom lines. If you go to harmonic distortion analysis or electromagnetic transients, then you have a higher frequency phenomena to study. And then the need to use the distributed, distributed parameter line formulations. So in the high frequency modeling, you have three formulations, the state space, the descriptor systems, and the Y of S matrix. If you want a higher phenomena, analyze higher phenomena, you have to go to the Y of S to capture the, the, the and to model the dis distributed parameter nature. Once you model distributed parameter nature of the lines, you see I, I'm modeling a network and every line is then near the disturbance I'm doing. Every line is modeled as distribute, distributed parameters, so it, it has an infinite number of poles. So we are talking about a system in which every component, if distributed, is modeled by an infinite number of poles. And you can have finite approximations for these infinite systems, which is representing up to some frequency level by cascaded pi networks. But uh, I don't think we covered this here, but this is not adequate, really. But of course, the main disadvantage of the Y of S matrix formulation is that there was no reliable algorithm for finding these poles if you are carrying out modal analysis or root locus. And that's our contribution in this thesis by Vahikio developed here at University of Brasilia and CEPEL, and the previous one by Sergio Gomez, developed with CEPEL and COPE, University of Rio de Janeiro. So these are the basic equations for the descriptor systems, in which this T matrix is a diagonal matrix having ones for the state variables and zero for the algebraic. A, B, C, and D are the classical state input, output matrices.
And then when you develop these equations, assemble the system in this descriptor form, you put the individual components, equations, and below you put the constraints there, the Kirchhoff law of currents for every node in your system. And then, in the same way as you do with your state space equations, you can do with your descriptor equations, keeping always that T matrix there and considering now that your A, B, C, D are augmented matrices of your DAE system, differential algebraic equations, that's another name for the descriptor system. And you can get transfer functions for multivariable systems, for scalar systems, and if you want to plot the frequency response, you just replace the S and scan a longer sample huh? values there of omega frequency. Time response, you can use, apply your numerical integration method. I'm using here the trapezoidal rule of integration, which is the method used in EMTP, is the method used in the transient stability software also of CEPEL, an 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 And now, here your basic RLC series network and the equations you'll be using for modeling the descriptor system, for assembling the matrix, this is you can say uh, it's very didactical and very boring. I agree. Mainly considering that I've seen it a lot. Okay, so this way you model the series elements, the parallel elements, etc. And now we see here the assembling of this three bus system with these components and uh, how we assemble the descriptor system matrix. Later we'll see how we assemble the Y of S matrix for the same system. And then the algorithms computing the poles, etc. So those are the parameters. These are all available in papers, I think in this back of this presentation, which will be available to you. We have the, the, the series of papers that can you can refer to. And these are the results produced by the MATLAB implementation and by PSCAD. PSCAD is a, a well-known software, one of the leaders there in the market for EMT, electromagnetic transient uh, uh, simulation. Those are the matrices you build, and here you have a sequence, you have ref you are referring to this equations appearing before and those are the equations and the elements the position for the elements and and parameters you see them along this various clicks so i'm not cheating And now the same thing for the Y of S formulation, just this polynomial formulation, I would say, yeah? but with a nodal based. So we have there the basic equations, now all a function of S. But whose elements are different, have polynomials in it, and you assemble it 
in a very similar way as you assemble the node admittance equation for your short circuit. How you assemble the diagonal term as the sum of all others. How you assemble the off diagonal, but not anymore at 60 hertz or 50 hertz. But you assemble as a function of S. And then you have, in the algorithm, you have to find the derivative for this matrix. So that's the, presented previously, the formula for the, the formulas for the descriptor system approach and now the formulas for the Y of S formulation. And there you need, in this new formulation, you need for the eigenvalue calculation algorithm, you need the derivative of these elements, which is as shown in the last line. For the series and for the parallel elements, and also for the voltage source. And now the same system and the matrix there, Y of S matrix now. Now it has the dimension equal to the number of buses. Then it shows here how you assemble the Y11. It's very easy to follow. The derivative, you know the derivative for the various elements. This is previously coded, so you get the the values for the parameters and you compute this. It's very programming friendly, right? And uh, the code, code is efficient. The degree of sparsity of this matrix is the same as the degree of sparsity in short circuit or power flow, okay, for a large system. So as opposed to a state matrix, this keeps the sparsity degree of the power network. And these are results in which the two simulations are placed one on top of the other, showing perfect coincidence now we go to the Y of S matrix formulation for the distributed parameter transmission line where you have the classical hyperbolic functions for the characteristic impedance there and all this is modeled into this S domain, okay? not bore you with the details, which I'm not expert in, in them myself. This is Vahikios and Gomez, laborious work over the years. So this goes into including even Carson's formula, Bessel functions, etc. I will not respond any questions on these particular details. But I admire very much their work. Okay. 
And now results for the system source, lumped impedances, and then distributed parameter line. And uh, RLC load at the remote end of the of the distributed parameter line. So here showing the connection of the the connection proceeds exactly as a nodal admittance matrix one. Now with the long line parameter terms including included. And now we go to the algorithm. Okay, once I have this equation assembled, every element model as polynomial functions of S, how can I solve this? What can I do with it? This is not an, a differential algebraic equation form. So I cannot apply my trapezoidal or my, uh, what can I do? except from replacing S by omega and plotting frequency responses. How can I get a time domain response, which is what is normally done in EMT studies? Well, we need to go find methods that find the poles and the residues and can you and you can then build your linear time response from these poles and residues and this is the the fundamental concepts of the of the algorithm which is based on the partial fraction expansion you find a pole you then compute the residue in this case can be scalar or or multivariable transfer function you can then compute your residue is either scalar or a matrix and you then once you get a pole and the associated residue matrix, you can extract it from the function. And then you proceed. It's like deflation. You get that answer. You don't want to get it again. So you extract this from the function, original function, creating a F dash. And once you extract two poles, F double dash, and then you find the derivative with respect to S, et cetera, and proceed with your Newton algorithm. That's what you do here. Those are details. Devil lies on the details. And then you have to extract here also the D term, because the D term offsets the, 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 the the magnitude, and as this Newton goes for the magnitude, if you put a very large D term, it becomes flat, and it, has, it, it is insensitive. So the algorithm, this is derived from my previous contribution, and it has gener generated a series of papers, some of them also in association with Professor Freitas, and uh, and these algorithms today being used by important mathematicians in Europe and US, numerical analysis people. Like Kalmir Bergen, any other Freitas? who are ours, we get citations from quite a few. What's the name of the French guy? Ian Duff, and I'm not sure if that is English. 
Peter Benner, the German. I'm trying to remember the, the guys that use our method. Anyhow, those are details that you can see. in the presentation, okay? So, I get my Newton. It's a sequential solution. I get one pole, as I said, I extract it using the partial fraction principle, eliminate this also from the function, becomes F dash, which is the original minus that residue matrix. Why is it a matrix, not a residue scalar? Because we are talking about multivariable transfer function multi-input, multi-output transfer functions. There is the derivative that we have to use. Lots of details and uh, impossible to describe here. This will take a long, and this is the, I guess this is a multivariable system, a two by two from our paper example. And so this is not the scalar transfer function. This is sigma max from my multivariable frequency response, okay? Multivariable frequency response, you have the bounds, eh? sigma max and the sigma min for your frequency domain result. Actually here I'm showing how the algorithm initialized, because the previous algorithms for the descriptor system, it finds one pole and in the search for the first pole, it already has a good hint for the second and for the third. So it's f after your first shift, it becomes auto-starting for the next sequential solutions. When you go to here, to Y of S, you don't have that. The system is non-linear with respect to S. And so you have to find the frequency response tips of your magnitude plot for then get the next. Estimates. Because the Newton method behaves well for good estimates, okay? And then you have a problem in computing the residue. Prior, we used in Sergio Gomez's thesis some method that didn't work so nicely, and then Vahikio had to go to the details, had to go into even more basics and find the integral around the found pole to get the residue value. And now here is the results published in the paper with Varicchio, Freitas, and myself. You have the 34 bus test system with 25 distributed parameter lines. Those are the dominant poles found in six, five, seven, 11, 12 iterations. And this is the sigma max response obtained by PSCAD, okay? And those are the equivalent modal order reduction of order 151. So the method found 151 poles And these poles were 
the model, reduced model of for this infinite system with 151 poles, we were able to model it. Why, if it is an infinite system, it would go, if it had no losses, it would go flat top all over. But if you, you we have lamped parameters also at the ends of these, we have the loads, okay? And we have a serious element also lamped with losses, so it goes down. Conclusions. Conclusions is look how great our work is, type of, okay? I'm late to finish, so reference included. Thank you, thank you all.